we should be doing much better for our children, and this target is one step to enable that. Question number nine, the name of Lan Farm. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Associate Minister for the Environment and asks, does he stand by his statement, quote, for now the government has agreed to suspend the obligation for councils to impose SNAs under the MPS for Indigenous Biodiversity, and we're sending a clear message that it would be unwise to bother? Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Andrew Hogarth. I stand by my statement that the government has agreed to suspend the obligations for councils to impose SNAs under the NPS Indigenous Biodiversity. I also stand by my statement last week that there has been no change to statutory or regulatory obligations on councils. Those obligations continue to apply until they are amended. Cabinet has agreed to amend the NPS Indigenous Biodiversity through a legislative vehicle and suspend the NPS requirements for councils to adopt new SNAs into their plans. Supplementary. What, if anything, does he consider the Biodiversity Collaborative Group, set up under the Honourable Dr Nick Smith, got wrong when they developed the framework of rules for councils to follow when working with farmers and iwi Māori landowners to identify significant natural areas? Point of order, the Honourable Christopher Bishop. I'm struggling, I'm struggling to, to work out how that is connected. Um, with the greatest respect to the, to the member who I know is a new <coughs> member, I'm, I'm struggling to understand how something to do with Dr Nick Smith in relation to something that the member said relates to the very, actually quite specific primary question around something that the, the new minister has said in relation to the NPS IB. Uh, well, yep. I mean, the, the primary did contain elements of the policy that the supplementary questions followed. Additionally, it's following um, comments from the answer to the primary question. So that's well within what has happened before, where we, people pick up on a statement that touches on a policy and then they ask, ask supplementary questions in relationship to that policy. Well, the member is a very good advocate for uh, that course. I'll hear from um, the Honourable James Shaw. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pointing to the, uh, to the point of order. Uh, the national just a minute, just a minute. Uh, you're very hard to hear there. Uh, people might need to do something about that. <clears throat> yeah. Speaking to the point of order, Mr Speaker. Oh, now you're there. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Uh, the National Policy Statement on Indigenous Biodiversity is derived from the work that was established uh, by Dr Nick Smith uh, in the um, Biodiversity Collaborative Group for that purpose, and I would have thought that the Minister responsible for RMA reform and the Minister responsible for that National Policy Statement would know that. Yes, I think the point is that it doesn't matter um, uh, who was the Minister at the time, policy endures. So I think um, the question might be better worded. Do you want to have another crack at that question? Land farm. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What, if anything, does he consider the Biodiversity Collaborative Group got wrong when they developed the framework of rules for councils to follow when working with farmers and iwi Māori landowners to identify significant natural areas? Mr Speaker. The Biodiversity Collaborative Stakeholder Group did not actually reach a consensus in the end. There was a minority statement by a number of groups, so there was no consensus on an outcome. The decision was not um, taking into account what the Biodiversity Stakeholder Group actually uh, didn't land on a decision. So that's the answer. Supplementary. Barn Farm. What, according to his own ministry's reporting, is the proportion of native species in Aotearoa that are threatened or at risk of extinction? I do not have those numbers on, on hand at the moment. I can come back to it. Supplementary. Supplementary. Yep, yep way go. Why is it important to make this amendment to the national direction to remove the obligation on councils? Mr Speaker, um, because the current use of SNAs are an unjustified intrusion on private property rights and they are a barrier to the great work that landowners have already been doing on their farms. This change will give us time to review the operation of SNAs and formulate ways to work with landowners to recognise them for the work they're already doing and to incentivise them to do more. Entry. Johanna Linden. 
did the Minister engage specifically with Whenua Māori landowners in the suspension of SNAs? And if you did, what was their feedback? Uh, no consultation has been undertaken in this. There will be consultation going in into what will be the future uh, use of SNAs. Basically, this was signalled in our coalition agreement in the 100-day plan. Supplementary. The Hon. David Seymour. What is the effect on people in rural New Zealand when they hear statements from urbanites such as they want to kill the birds faster, as the Green co-leader Chloe Swarbrick just heckled while he was answering questions about a serious topic? Mr. Speaker. Yeah, just um, yeah. I will leave the, try that. Try the question a different way. What is the effect on the psyche, morale, and mental health of those on, in rural New Zealand when it is assumed they want to remove intrusive regulations? such as SNAs, in order to, quote, kill the birds faster, as I just heard from a member opposite. Point of order, Ricardo Mendes March. I don't believe the Associate Minister has any responsibility for the first part of that question, beyond the fact that it is, frankly, just really? ridiculous that it is even being asked. Well, that would um, really render question time quite useless if we took that uh, view, <laughs> uh, because in the end, uh, every minister's decision affects New Zealanders. If you couldn't ask a question uh, related to that, then we'd be in big trouble here. Uh, uh, Andrew Hogarth. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I think rural New Zealand are sick and tired of being portrayed as people that don't care about their land. Our land is so important to us, it is vital. Up and down this country, I see more and more farmers engaging in planting activities on their farms, creating wetlands, planting off streams, riparian planting. This is all happening. This is happening under farmers' own steam at the moment. We intend to encourage that and incentivise them to do more. How then will this government protect Indigenous biodiversity and Tonga species on private land once the requirement for councils to do so has been stripped away and undermined? Mr Speaker. How we will encourage this is by encouraging the behaviour that has already been happening. As I have said to this House a number of times, in my time in farming, I have seen a complete mind shift from farmers who are doing more and more every day on protecting biodiversity on their farm, encouraging more of it. That is how we are going to be working with farmers to do more of this. Before we move to question 10, before we move to question 10, could I just make a, uh, a broad plea to the House that when questions are being asked or lodged with the um, uh, clerk's office, uh, that the use of uh, acronyms is absolutely minimised so that anybody reading the question can know fully what it's about. During the course of the answers there, we had uh, those various uh, uh, acronyms uh, used in their, their full names, that, that would be good, uh, if they were also in the question. So uh, if the House could take that on board, that would be useful. Uh, question number 10, the name of Sam Uffendahl.